Are we excited about Cameron Dantzler? All right, y'all, and we are back once again here to do another quick shot with our man, Matt Fries, to talk to us today about Cameron Dantzler. Cameron Dantzler, a pick that uh, Pro Football Focus and many others loved for the Vikings. Matt, why should we be so excited about this pick? Well, so I think the first thing you want to think about when you're talking about the Cameron Dantzler pick is kind of look at who we had in our corner room. And at that point in the draft, 89 overall, um, you know, we have Mike Hughes, who we took in the first round. We also drafted Jeff Gladney in the first round this year. Um, and really, you know, I, I think both of those guys are great, but they're both 5'10", so they're smaller corners. So I think the first thing you look at with Dantzler is he's 6'2", and we kind of need that height for a matchup against taller, potentially more physical receivers who can go up and win high at the catch point. You know, we've got a couple of really good physical receivers in the division in Kenny Galladay and uh, Allen Robinson. So having somebody who can match up with that is going to be useful. And we have guys like Chris Boyd and we have Holton Hill on the roster. And I like Holton Hill quite a bit personally, but it's good to get him some competition because I'm not, 100% confident he can start right away. So I think um, if you look at the way the draft played out with the corners that were there, um, I would have considered Cam Dantzler kind of the last guy in that tier of corners I felt were ha had a pretty good shot of becoming starters in the league. Um, the other player I loved who was still on the board was Amik Robertson out of Louisiana Tech, but he's only 5'9", so we can't go out there and trot out two 5'10 guys and a 5'9 guy against Kenny Galladay, right? So um, I think it makes a lot of sense from that perspective. Um, but getting into Dantzler a little bit, um, first of all, I think you love the tape, right? Uh, he He's very physical. Um, he presses guy. He's, he's extremely effective in press. He's got a good soft press technique. He's very patient when he's using that soft press technique. So he'll let the wide receiver declare that's that's a big key for corners when you're trying to press guys is if you get your hips turned the wide receiver is one so you need to stay square until the wide receiver goes inside or outside and then you can follow them in that direction and you can turn appropriately so he does a really good job with that um <laughs> excuse me uh what you love to see in the lsu game this year right so Dantzler played in the sec west um, that means he plays LSU every year. That means he plays Alabama every year. So he got to see, you know, two top five quarterbacks and about six first round wide receivers that he's playing against, right? And uh, he was playing Jamar Chase. Uh, so uh, he Dantzler played boundary corner for Mississippi State, which means that he's on the short side of the field. So when a team is on the left hash, he plays on the left side of the field or when the team's on the right hash, he plays on the right side of the field. Right. And LSU played Jamar Chase, who was the best receiver in college football last year. You know, he won the Blitnikoff award to the boundary the whole time. So he was one-on-one -on -one with Jamar Chase for most of the game. And if you look at that tape, I mean, he's sticking with him on vertical routes. He's winning with physicality, which Jamar Chase is one of the most physical receivers in college football. So you love to see that from him and even displays some, some really nice ball skills. There was a play where, first of all, he stuck with him vertical, realized a pass was coming and got around and got his hands on the football, almost making the catch as he was falling to the ground. It was a, it was a really nice kind of intuitive play on his part. So I think you like that about his game. Um, now I've talked about his height and I've talked about his physicality. The only issue I have with that is despite being six foot two, he only weighed in at 188 of the combine. And I think he played below 188. So, um, if you look at his 40 time from the combine, I mean, he ran a four, six, four, that's incredibly concerning, right? I think he plays above that on tape, but I think part of the reason he ran in the four sixes is because he tried to put on weight for the, on the com for the combine, and it was bad weight, so he wasn't as athletic as he played during the season, and that's going to be a problem because if you watch in the run game, if he get if a blocker gets his hands on him, he's getting driven back five yards almost instantly, and he's getting blocked out of the play very often. Um, so that's a really big concern for him starting. 
uh, you know, we're all in quarantine right now. I hope Gladney, uh, sorry, not Dantzler, not Gladney, can put on a quarantine 15 <laughs> because, uh, you know, he's going to need it in the NFL. Um, actually, interestingly, if you look at it, and I was just looking this up today, uh, so Dantzler is 6'2". He's got just under 31-inch arms, which are actually relatively short arms, and he weighed in at 188 at the Combine. Uh, Trey Wayne's was six foot or just over six foot. He had 31 inch arms and he weighed in at 186 at the combine. Okay. So the Vikings did a really good job of bulking Trey Wayne's up, you know, after that first season where he didn't really play a whole lot. And, you know, he became, he was a really good run defending corner. And I think Dantzler kind of has that makeup. He, he's not afraid to get his nose dirty. He gets in there on the play. Um, and he's a high energy player. He just doesn't have the size right now to kind of make an impact, as much of an impact as you would like. So if you're looking at him right now in a perfect world, uh, based on the skill set that he brings to bear, because I can tell you really, really like him as a player. You really like what you've seen about him on film. How would you stack him up against the other guys that are in there right now? So I also like Holton Hill a lot. And I was actually watching some Holton Hill and Chris Boyd this morning just to kind of see what I thought about those guys in comparison to Dantzler. And um, if, first of all, I think the, the weight issue and the size issue is a concern for me with Dantzler. So primarily for that reason, I would say that he's probably sitting year one as he gets into an NFL weight room, which again, it's another reason it's a concern is it's not like Mississippi State's, you know, a D2 program that doesn't have funding, right? They play in the SEC West. They're in the premier conference, in the premier division, in the premier conference of college football, they have a high level strength and conditioning program. They have that sort of program to be able to allow these guys to put on weight and come out ready to play in the NFL. And, um, you know, hopefully Dantzler, if he, maybe something's not working right and the Vikings can figure that out and they allow him to put on weight, but he's going to need that time. And also I think, you know, with the situation, everything that's going on right now, you kind of lose a lot of the hands-on experience with the players. So that's going to put all of the rookies behind. And, you know, if with Dantzler not really being ready in my eyes in the first place, I think that's going to put a Holton Hill on the field. And I'm actually pretty comfortable with that. Um, Holton Hill, if you look at him, he, he was very sticky last year when he played. You know, he played, he played only a few games, but he – moved very well. Um, I think he did a good job with processing uh, what's going on in front of him. Chris Boyd, when I watched him, he was kind of struggling a little bit with mental processing where he was carrying routes he shouldn't have been carrying and, you know, kind of abandoning the flat in a couple scenarios or, or something like that, where I think the game hasn't slowed down for him yet, but he's also very physically promising. So you've got kind of these, these physical – promising corners and it's kind of cool they're all young it's kind of cool that they're gonna get to battle it out and we'll probably get they will be improved for the fact that they're competing against each other I think that's awesome so Cameron Master bring me back here what is your favorite play that you watched of him on tape um so my favorite play is the one I kind of referenced earlier it's one where he he doesn't really get his hands on Chase early. That's okay. It, he doesn't need to in this case, but he runs a vertical route. And as the ball is thrown, he realizes the ball is thrown. He turns around and he almost makes the catch. Now, he doesn't actually make the catch. It would have been a lot cooler if it was an interception. But I just kind of loved the ability to run with, you know, not a true burner at wide receiver, but a very good wide receiver and then have the awareness and the ball skills to get around and get your hands on the ball. I mean, um, catch data, have him playing wide receiver. So, I mean, it all makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if – exactly. You know, if he's catching the ball, he's playing wide receiver. Yeah. But – um. So, that's the play. That's, that's the one that if we're going to look to, like, one play to kind of – uh, yeah, figure out who Cam Dansler is as a player, that's the one that you think we should take a look at? I think – uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's the first one that comes to mind. There's also a, a couple more good reps where he's playing physically and he's kind of beating Chase up. 
Okay. Um, so any anything where he gets his hands on the guy at the line of scrimmage, it's kind of over. He's good at maintaining his balance. He's good at knocking his opponent off balance and still staying within phase, right? So he's not getting beaten by wide receiver swim moves or, or stuff like that when he's attacking at the line of scrimmage, and that's really nice. Um, another thing I noticed with him is he actually kind of has a knack for moving through and weaving through traffic. So if he gets blocked, it's kind of over for him, but he's able to navigate around blockers. And also there were a couple plays where he's blitzing from the side as a, as a cornerback blitz, right? And he was able to navigate through and get to the quarterback pretty quickly as well. So Zimmer loves to dial up his blitzes. I know Mackenzie Alexander hit quite a few blitzes in his time now. Mac played more slots, so I, I don't really know if we blitz from the outside all that much. I don't think the Vikings do, but if they do want to send Dantzler on a blitz, I feel pretty good at, about his ability to do so. Awesome. All right, so last question I got for you here. It's a multi-parter, um, and I, I'm not going to lie. I stole this question from uh, our boy Eric Eager and George on uh, the PFF forecast. You should check that out, YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Excellent stuff if you aren't already. But they asked Mike Renner a question that I like because it helps put things in perspective for our, like, what you think of the range of outcomes for the player. So with all that preamble, Cameron Dantzler, if he hits his ceiling, what player would you compare him to? And then if he just hits kind of his midpoint, his average, just become like an average NFL player, who would his player come be? So, um... The midpoint's an interesting one, and I'll start with that. And I think um, kind of what you would see with his midpoint is maybe a bit of the downside of what Trey Waynes is. So Waynes had his ups and downs where he, he was a very good player, but uh, he, he was a very good player for a while, and then he kind of had some downturns, and it was, it was kind of back and forth, right? So you're going to get a guy who's physical and run support, who's maybe not the largest player, who you might want to have a bit more size. Um, the, the one issue there is Wayne's had the deep speed to, to catch up if he got burned, right? Dantzler isn't going to let people stack him all that often, but if that does happen, and, you know, NFL receivers are a lot better than the players you're playing in college, even if you are playing Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Henry Ruggs, you know, um, but... I, I think he's going to have trouble and he's going to get burned deep a bit more. Okay. Um, so I, I would say the the bad parts of Trey Waynes are kind of your midpoint outcome, right? And that's not and that's not horrible. Trey Waynes is a starting cornerback in the NFL and Cam Dantzler is a third round pick. So if you get a guy who, who you can start, I think that's, that's pretty okay. Now, if you want to go to the upside, um, I think that's an interesting question. Uh, hmm. So the thing is, he's a larger corner, and he's not going to be a like. I don't think he's going to be a you know peak Xavier Rhodes, right? or anything like that. But I think with his physicality and with his ability to win once he gets his hands on people, he, at, at his peak, he's going to occasionally lock people down. Now, again, like Wayne's, Rhodes is, I, 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 Rhodes probably isn't the best comparison. Um, a Richard Sherman with fewer interceptions is probably a more, like, and that's, that's obviously like the very, the very elite range of outcomes, right? It's not a, he's not going to become Richard Sherman by any means. I don't believe that really, but um, I think he can play to a level where he's beating people with physicality. He's using his patience in soft press to stick with people, even if he's not as fast as the receivers he's covering, because that's something that Richard Sherman is very technically proficient at, right? In terms of being patient, letting the receiver declare what they're going to do, and then taking that away. Damn. And even sometimes baiting the quarterback. Now that's, that's where Richard Sherman set himself apart, right? His ability to bait the quarterback into making a throw that 
that he shouldn't. I'm not sure Dantzler is going to get there, but I believe he has the tool set to at least cover guys like Richard Sherman could. There we go. That's good enough for me. And uh, Matt, as always, thanks for putting the time in on the tape. Thanks for coming on and, uh, and recording with me. Let me know when is the uh, when's the article dropping and when are we going to be able to find it? So uh, we're recording this on Monday night. The article should be dropping tomorrow morning. So it should be hot and fresh Tuesday morning. You know, if you're off of your Memorial Day cookout or, or whatever you're doing in the States, I know you're in Canada, Jason, so <laughs> you don't quite have the same thing. But, you know, getting back to work should be bright and early for people to read. There we go. Well, we love it. We love it. As always, thank you, viewers, listeners. Thanks for sticking with us here, and we will talk to you soon. Have a good one. Thank you for watching or listening. As always, if you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. And if you're listening to the podcast, please rate us on your favorite aggregator. Skull, everybody. <laughs>